Our second reading today spoke about the priesthood and we read at the beginning of the reading that every high priest has been taken out of mankind and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God. It says the priest is taken out of mankind. The priesthood is not just another job or a role within the Christian community. It can't be reduced simply to its functional aspects alone. It has been ordained by God and functions in the spiritual order. And firstly, as the letter of the Hebrews reminded us, the priesthood is a calling, a vocation, it's a grace. So in other words, it has a supernatural origin. It's a calling where a man senses in his spirit that God has placed his hand on his life. So it's not something that a man just chooses out of a certain attraction to the role, though that may exist as well. But priest is essentially aware that it's God who's called him in the same way that the prophets of the Old Testament were deeply and personally aware that it was God who had entrusted them with a particular mission. So Jeremiah, the prophet we read in the first reading this morning, heard God say to him about his own calling. He says, Before you were born, I knew you, and I formed you and created you. Before you were born... I appointed you a prophet to all the nations. So similarly, a priest is aware that God has called him. Indeed, he can be conscious of the fact that his life has been marked out for the priesthood from its very beginning. So he's called out of the normal patterns of life in the society around him. When ordained, He is changed in the very heart of his being. He is a priest. In the reading today we hear, you are a priest of the order of Melchizedek and forever. Though he, as the letter of the Hebrews says, like every other person, struggles with his own weaknesses and sinfulness, he has been set apart for sacred ministry. He knows that he is a flawed individual, and indeed unworthy of what has been asked of him. But this awareness of his own limitations is, as the letter of the Hebrews says, enabling him to sympathise with those who are ignorant and uncertain. So living within the limitations of his own weakness, he has a compassion and kindness to those who struggle in life. He's not above them, He simply walks with them. The letter of the Hebrews comments that a priest is appointed to act for men in their relations with God. So the primary focus of a priest is on sacred things, the worship of God in the sacred liturgy, the minister of the sacraments, the one who blesses and leads in prayer. And he also stands before God on behalf of the people, presenting their prayers and, in, and petitions. So he has this role of being a certain mediator between God and humanity. He also carries out a prophetic function by proclaiming the word of God and preaching the gospel. He calls people to faith and instructs them in the ways of God. To be able to do these things with devotion and fruitfulness, he must be first of all a man of prayer. So he sits with God daily in the quietness of meditation and ponders the will of God. He seeks to align his heart and will with the intentions of God. He offers himself to be a servant of God's divine purposes in the world. So he lives not for himself, but for God and the things of the Spirit. 
So in this way he stands apart as a man of God. That indeed he might stand in the breach between God and man. Recent years have been difficult ones for priests. The revelation of child sexual abuse has seriously damaged the standing of priests within the community, the broader community and, and the church community. And priests are burdened by the shame of it. Priests also struggle to contend with the declining numbers of Catholics attending Mass and the sacraments, the general crisis of faith that is now such a feature of our society. And they find it difficult to be able to effectively engage with young families or young people who just seem disinterested with matters spiritual. And many priests are conscious that they, their efforts and their ministry seem to be bearing little fruit. But there are signs of hope. We are slowly emerging from a long drought of vocations to the priesthood. And while we still need many more young men to come forward, there are some encouraging positive signs. It is encouraging to see a growing number of young men in Australia who have a deep faith in Christ and have a love for the church, offering themselves to become priests. In the midst of our deep need for the ministry of priests in the church in Australia, we have been greatly blessed with priests coming from overseas to provide pastoral ministry in our parishes. We're grateful for these men who have left their own culture and families to offer themselves to serve us in our time of need. They are a gift to us and they bring with them the vibrancy of the faith and Catholic life that they have known. So I thank God for Father Leonard, Father Fidelis, for our seminarian Vinko Muriadin, and the other priests, the seminarians, who have all left their own people and have offered to serve the church here in Tasmania. Sadly, our culture is has become spiritually very poor. And priests from overseas are in fact enriching our faith and our Catholic way of life as they minister out of their own background and experience. And so we are blessed to have them. Our church needs priests. They're indispensable to the nature and life and ministry of a church. For all that lay people can do and the increase in lay engagement in the life and work of the church has been one of the great blessings of our time. But we still need priests. We need men who are willing to dedicate their lives to the things of God. We need men who are prepared to sacrifice their lives so that they can stand in that breach to be men of God to be faithful proclaimers of gospel truth, to stand at the altar to offer sacrifice to God on behalf of the people, to be compassionate pastors to the people entrusted to their care. So pray for priests. Pray that priests will firstly be holy men of God. And pray for vocations to the priesthood. Pray that more men, young men in Tasmania and Australia, will hear this call and offer themselves for priestly service.